So it's highly likely that if you clicked on today's podcast or if you're watching this on YouTube, you want to work on your posture. It's also highly likely that once you read the title, you might have stopped slouching a little bit, you sat up with your chest taller and your shoulders back. And our posture is incredibly important. I think all of us know that. And we also probably know that we don't do enough to look after it. We find ourselves in many different positions. We maybe don't do as much flexibility and mobility work as we'd like to. And yet we really, really still want to have the impacts and benefits of having good posture. And today I want to go through five solid ways in which you can start to improve your posture and fix some of the challenges that you might be experiencing. So we'll start with number one, which might be contradictory to what you were expecting, which is not to feel like you have to have perfect quote unquote posture all the time. We might think that we need to be in this incredibly upright position for as long as we can hold it. And as much as that is beneficial in some ways, and it might be better to be completely slouched over, the more important thing that we want to be looking at is to be regularly moving our bodies around. Because if you are keeping that really super upright position, that is actually quite exhausting. It's quite demanding from an energy standpoint compared to slouching over, which is quite often the reason that we do it. And therefore, if you're doing your absolute best to hold your position super, super upright for like the first two hours of the day, and you've got eight hours sat at your desk, it's highly likely that you're going to struggle for the remaining six, and you're probably going to be in an even more slouch position than when you started. What What's more important is that you move around. You have an opportunity to not keep yourself in a fixed position for too long. So slouching isn't necessarily a problem as long as you don't spend your entire day there. So the first thing I'm gonna encourage you to do is just to keep moving positions. It's also gonna aid with lubrication of the discs as well. And the more the fluids going around your vertebrae and the discs, the healthier your back and your spine will be. The second on my list on how to fix your posture is to start resistance training. I can't tell you how valuable this is. I work with a lot of dentists, for example, who are holding a hunched over position for large portions of the day when they're treating their clients. And they will always ask me, you know, what can I do with the posture that I have to find myself in? And realistically, that can't change. That is the nature of their work. So outside of encouraging them to maybe take more rests in the day and just take more time outside of the clients to kind of fix their position and move around, the only other major recommendation that I can give them to improve is to start resistance training. If you have a super strong back from the deadlifts you're doing, the rowing movements you're doing, and just overall adding strength through compound movements, you're gonna be a lot more able and capable of navigating the day-to-day -day tasks. So picking up whatever from the floor is gonna be less demanding, holding over that hunched position is gonna be less demanding. And although it might seem counterintuitive intuitive because most people say, well, you know, being in that position all day is the thing that puts me in pain and now I'm going to put even more pain through my back. It's actually going to be the thing that's going to help because it is going to strengthen. So as long as you're mindful about the amount of volume you place through that muscle group, your technique as well, and of course your recovery capabilities, you will benefit massively. So getting a strong back is going to be a massive key and solution to a lot of the pain you're potentially experiencing and navigating the daily tasks with a lot more ease. Number three is to recognize the the impact that both stress and sleep play on our posture. And I met a very good mattress saleswoman some years ago who told me that we spend a third of our lives on our mattress, right? If we spend eight hours of sleep, that's a third of our day. And we do that for the entirety of our lives. We place a lot of priority on the shoes that we wear, the desks that we spend our days out working, but we usually spend just as much, if not more time on our mattresses than the shoes that we wear or the desk that we sit in. And apart from her being a very good saleswoman, she had a very good point as well. So optimizing our sleeping environment, if we're gonna stay in a position for a very long time, is incredibly important. Making sure you've got a good quality mattress you've got the right type of pillows that support optimal posture and I'm not the guy to come to in terms of recommendations to your sleeping position obviously that's going to be very individual dependent but based on the research you're going to mostly find that sleeping on your back or sleeping on your side is going to be most beneficial but just making sure that your bed your mattress your pillows are all of high quality and also if you're sleeping with a partner you've both got enough space I think those are going to be really imperative steps the next aspect is of course stress most of us know what our posture gets like 
when we're stressed or anxious or we've seen other people, right? We get hunched over, we kind of protect ourselves almost, right? It's quite a normal thing to see us do. And if we're very stressed for long periods of time, we might find ourselves in this position. I and mean, we might find ourselves being way more hunched over than usual or even just doing unusual things with our posture. We might even be a little bit more depressed, for example, and we might be a little bit lazier with the way that we are holding ourselves and holding our body. And our posture says a lot about our state and our confidence and our feeling about ourselves as well. So it's really important to remember the impact of that. And if you're feeling a little bit low, a little bit more consciousness around your posture could be helpful. Number four is going to be to incorporate some regular mobility and flexibility work. And a lot of us might go through phases where we're following a 10 minute YouTube video on how to fix our neck, shoulder or back pain. And we do a series of five stretches in a day and we feel amazing for it. And we account our improvements to that down to this YouTube video where I started doing these five stretches. And although they can be super beneficial, I don't think that they're gonna necessarily solve all of our challenges. I think a lot of the factors I've just mentioned will contribute. However, they can also be helpful, but I don't want them to be everything that you do because I think we place a little bit too much importance on those sometimes. However, what this really is all about is the fact that most of us are walking around in suboptimal positions. And it might not be that they're suboptimal in day-to-day -day life, but they might be quite suboptimal when it comes to trying to train, for example. If we're going for a bench press, then typically we want to pin our shoulder blades back, we want a slight arch in our lower back, we want our chest up, our rib cage tucked down, and therefore if someone's got rounded over shoulders and they can't even get into the position of having their chest elevated, and then they start to bench press and the majority of the work is happening on their shoulders versus their chest, then it's just going to exacerbate an issue that they already have. So it's not to say that bench pressing is the problem or even that posture is the problem, it's once they are combined and then it's just going to make things worse and worse and worse. So then introducing some mobility work around the shoulders and the pecs and the back for example might be helpful and you might argue well yes yeah, strengthening the back the antagonist might even be more valuable but I would say it's less about picking one and trying to do multiple right there's no reason why you can't strengthen your back and also work on your mobility and flexibility. So I would start with maybe five or ten minutes three to four times a week and maybe prioritizing your quote-unquote problem area and that will be a perfect way to get started. Number five is to look at the areas that you spend a lot of time at and see what you can do to optimize things from a postural perspective. Most of us spend a lot of time at a desk and maybe during the pandemic we weren't prepared to have a home office and therefore we revert to using our kitchen table or just the random desk that we had in our house but now it's been two, three years, and we're still in that same position. We're still in that chair that's not really suited for that desk. That desk is still not quite at the height that it would be to have an optimal position for my shoulders or my back, for example. So it'd be worth looking into that, and especially if you're gonna continue to work from home and to create more of an ergonomic environment for you to work in. The same goes for where you chill out, maybe. You know, maybe you've got really super old sofa where you sank in and you're holding your position for a long time and you can never really get comfortable, and this is something to to look at as well. Any place that you spend a significant amount of time, whether it's to relax, whether it's to work, is going to be important to look at to see if you can optimize it from a postural standpoint and then that's going to make a difference later down the line. And also on that note, if there's not much you can do to change those environments, just make sure that you're using the earlier tip of getting up and moving around regularly or just changing your position, right? A lot of people say, well, I can't change my desk at work and I also can't leave my desk during the day. So just try and shift the weight from one side to another. Try stand up just to have have a little stretch, a little bit move around, and then sit back down again because that will reset your position, that will reset your posture, and it's always more beneficial to move around than to hold yourself in fixed positions, no matter what they look like for long periods on end. So I hope that helps team. Any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have an amazing week ahead. I hope that you are on your way to some slightly better posture, and I look forward to speaking with you all very, very soon.